Welcome to Michigan's Wilder One Centennial News Report for February 2017, the 32nd Division in the World War. The 32nd Division was a National Guard Infantry Division made up of men from Wisconsin and Michigan. They're also known as the Red Arrow Division because they pierced every line they attacked. The French called them Les Terribles. During this program, we're going to be focusing on the Michigan aspect of the 32nd Division. The State Report. Michigan's Wilder One Centennial webpage is on the National Wilder One Centennial website. Read about how Harold A. Furlong, Lieutenant U.S. Army, 353rd Infantry, 89th Division, won Michigan's only Congressional Medal of Honor during the First World War at www.cc.org slash Michigan. The National Report. The U.S. Wilder One Centennial Commission has launched its nationwide Wilder One Poppy program to enable groups across the country to support the construction of the new National Wilder War One Memorial at Pershing Park in Washington, D.C., while also raising funds for their own organization. The Wilder War One Poppy Kits come in 60 poppy seed packages and will be used for fundraisers for local organizations. To find out more, go to www.cc.org slash poppy. A century ago, February 1st, 1917, German Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz announced Germany was resuming unrestricted submarine warfare. On February 3rd, 1917, the U.S. liner Housatonic was sunk by a German submarine on the same day that President Wilson breaks off diplomatic relations with Germany. February 5, 1917, President Wilson's veto of the Immigration Act was overruled by Congress. It was the first immigration bill aimed at restricting as opposed to regulating immigrants. It marked a turn towards nativism. The law imposed literacy tests on immigrants, created new categories of inadmissible persons and barred immigration from Asian Pacific Zone. It governed immigration po policy until amended in 1952. February 23, 1917, the Russian February Revolution began. The revolution was confined to the capital, Petrograd, and its vicinity and lasted about eight days. It involved mass demonstrations with Russian police and soldiers. On February 27th, the mutinous Russian army forces sided with revolutionaries. The result was the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II and the end of the Romanov dynasty. The Tsar's government was replaced by a Russian provisional government. On February 28, 1917, President Woodrow Wilson released to the press the Zimmerman Telegram. Zimmerman Telegram was a coded message between German Foreign Secretary Arthur Zimmerman and German Ambassador to Mexico Heinrich von Eckert. The contents of the Zimmerman Telegram instructed German Ambassador to Mexico Eckert that if the United States should enter the war, Germany would help fund Mexico's war with the United States. The Zimmerman Telegram incident was one more reason why President Wilson had a difficult time remaining neutral. After his election pledge, he kept us out of war. The 32nd Division was organized under the War Department orders of July 18, 1917, from National Guard troops from Wisconsin and Michigan. Details of this organization are given in General Order No. 101, War Department, 1917. Wisconsin furnished approximately 15,000 and Michigan 8,000 troops of all arms. Later, 4,000 National Army troops, or draftees, from Wisconsin and Michigan were transferred to the division shortly before it left for France. When war was declared on Germany April 6, 1917, there were two National Guard infantry regiments, one from each of the states, 
in federal service. The 33rd Michigan, which had never been mustered out since its service on the Mexican border, and the 3rd Wisconsin, which had been called out for guard duty on war plants. In July, the remainder of the state troops were mobilized at the state camps, and in early August, the movement of the troops to the division training camps at Camp MacArthur, Texas, commenced. On August 26, 1917, Major General James Parker assumed command of the 32nd Division in accordance to War Department orders. On September 18, 1917, he left for France on a special duty with his chief of staff. Upon General Parker's departure for France, Brigadier General William G. Hahn, U.S. Army, succeeded in command of the division. Brigadier General Louis C. Koval, formerly the Brigadier General commanding the Michigan National Guard troops, was assigned to command the 63rd Infantry Brigade. He was in charge of the 125th and 126th Infantry Regiments, which were made up of Michigan National Guard troops. In charge of the 119th Field Artillery was Colonel Chester B. McCormick. 125th and 126th Infantry Regiments plus the 119th Field Artillery Regiment was how most of the 8,000 Michigan National Guardmen in the 32nd Division were organized. <laughs> Highlights of the 32nd Division Six months under fire from May to November 1918 with just 10 days in the rest area. Fought on five fronts and three major offensives. Ains Marnes, Waz Ains, and Meuse Argonne. Losses, 14,000 casualties from all causes. Met and vanquished 23 German divisions from which 2,153 prisoners were taken. Gained 38 kilometers in four attacks and repulsed every enemy counterattack. Marched 300 kilometers to the Rhine as a front-line element of the 3rd U.S. Army and occupied for four months the center section of the Koblenz Bridgehead, holding 63 towns and 400 square kilometers of territory. First American troops to set foot on German soil in Alsace in May 1918 captured Fiemes in the Marne Offensive after an advance of 19 kilometers in seven days, fought in the Wies Ains Offensive as the only American unit in General Mangin's famous 10th French Army, breaking the German line which protected the Chemin Downs twice in the line in the Meuse Argonne's offensive, fighting continuously for 20 days, penetrating the Krumhilde Stellung, crossing the Meuse, and starting a drive to flank Metz. Over 800 officers and men decorated by American, French, and Belgium governments, the colors of all four infantry regiments, three artillery regiments, three machine gun battalions were the Croix de Gare of the Republic of France, while every flag and standard in the division has four American battle bands. 32nd Division arrived in France February 1918, being the 6th Division to join the American Expeditionary Force, and left Germany homeward bound in April of 1919, and arrived in the United States and demobilized during May of 1919. The 32nd Division arrived in France in February of 1918. It was the 6th Division to make up the American Expeditionary Force under General John J. Pershing. The unit's morale was temporarily lessened when they learned that they were to be assigned to create a depot for First Corps that would train replacement soldiers. Major General Hahn reminded his commanders that every soldier's duty was to contribute their best to the war effort, including training replacements. However, General Hahn lobbied General Pershing and after several stormy sessions, finally convinced him that the 32nd could hold its own as a division. May 18, 1918, four battalions of the 32nd Division replaced decimated French troops in a front line in Alsace along a 17-mile front. The 32nd Division conducted combat patrols into Germany itself gained the distinction of being the first U.S. troops to set foot on German soil during World War I. Moving out of their trenches, the 32nd Division fought continuously for 20 days during the Meuse Argonne Offensive. The division was the front line element of the 3rd U.S. Army. The Germans were well dug in after four years of trench warfare and had orders to hold the line at all costs. 
October 14th at 5.30 a.m., the 32nd Division broke through the maze of barbed wire and took the trenches forming a Hindenburg line and moved on to the last German stronghold, Krimhilde Stallung, where they reached the Meuse River. The 32nd Division was the first Allied Army unit to penetrate the Hindenburg line. During the meuse Argonne Offensive, the 32nd Division defeated 11 German divisions, including the fearsome Prussian Guards and the German Army's 28th Division, known as the Kaiser Zone. The offensive cost the division 5,950 casualties. The next objective for the 32nd Division was to flank the German Army at Metz. They marched over 300 kilometers to the Rhine River. The division was still engaging German troops east of the Meuse River when the armistice was finally signed. Following the armistice, the 32nd Division served as part of the Army of Occupation in Germany, commanded by Major General William Lassiter. The division was inactivated on April 5, 1919, and on July 24, 1924, the 32nd Division was reorganized, incorporating National Guard units from Wisconsin and Michigan. Its headquarters home was at Lansing, Michigan. To see the World War I 32nd Division battle flag in Lansing, Michigan at the Michigan Historical Museum, you'll need to contact Matt Van Acker, part of the Save the Flags program, which preserves Civil War, Spanish-American, World War I, World War II battle flags that used to fly in the rotunda of the Michigan State Capitol.